uh, watching this. Uh, we have a robust agenda. I'm Steve David, fortunate enough to serve as the, the coach of this uh, robust uh, uh, group of individuals uh, doing incredibly good work. We're going to do a our introductions and welcome a little bit differently. Uh, and we'll do that in just a moment. But we are so fortunate to have the Chief Justice of Indiana, Loretta Rush here. Yay! <laughs> She's gonna have to put up with me much longer. Well, no, that's not true. Chief, welcome. Well, thank you, thank you. Thank, I was glad that, uh, um, appreciate being invited to come speak to you. You know, once a juvenile judge, always a juvenile judge. You know, you can leave the juvenile courtroom, but you can't really leave the juvenile courtroom. So my heart is with the kids. And um, I sat on the juvenile bench for 14 years. And before that, I did all most of my pro bono work with children. I was either a guardian ad litem or a cost at about over 200 kids on top of being a civil litigator. My partners never loved that, but I did. And I think that's what kind of drew me into the juvenile bench. And, and if you're ever at the state house, come by, because my bench in Tiffany County was, the kids would give me pictures and Faith who's knocked it out of the park, replacing me as a juvenile court judge. Um, in Indiana, my whole bench, did you cover yours with pictures? No. <laughs> so I, I, mean, I had hundreds, so they're decoupage. I, I love to decoupage and I like the word decoupage. Um, so they're decoupage in my chambers at the state house. And it's just a constant reminder how important the court is to the lives of children. And we can never forget that because you know what we think we're doing for them, we're doing to them. And when I look at areas that need improvement, I, I love what this group is doing because um, we, we have to have some consistency with regard to how we deal with our youth. You know, why are, you know, 100 kids going from this county to DOC, but only five there? And we've learned a lot. We're smarter than we used to be. It used to be, you know, post Columbine, the 90s, we're going to be tough on crime, right? That's we're going to show them, and, but it doesn't work we make kids worse in the system. If we don't really have tools to determine what children have to be detained to protect themselves and protect society, we can make them worse just in a short period of time. And we have a lot of juvenile cases that come up to us on the Indiana Supreme Court. And there, there are a lot of deep end cases, but there's a lot of room for um, improvement. One of the things we do on the court is we do, we go on the road and we talk to all our trial court judges and uh, judges to see to hear from them because they're the ones dealing with and we've got several of our outstanding judges here um, today and one of them said this the kids are younger and younger with more serious mental health um, issues than we've ever seen before and I almost want it to be like holiday world or king's island that you've got to be this tall to go to detention right there should be a yardstick in my court so we're not sending people that are three feet ten inches um, into detention and I used to go, before I became a juvenile judge, I stopped my practice and I traveled the state for about six months. I went to every placement we placed, children, all the residential placements. I've been in GOC, I had been in girl school, boy school at that time, and foster homes and just, just a lot. I thought we, had, we needed to see where we were placing our children. Um, and you know, I, I go to facilities that there are 10 year olds and a 17 year old. I just, there's a lot of trauma that gets done to children. You know, I never had as a juvenile court judge a lot of success with long-term residential placement. So we need to look at our resources and really determine where we should put our resources to have the best avenue of success and when we should uh, um, intervene. And we now have evidence-based um, information. We've got data. I was just looking at the court improvement um, project. If they look into all the caseload data on all our DCS cases, and that is how long does it take a child to get to permanency? How long does it take from the time that permanency is termination of parental rights to a child gets placed for adoption? And I hate seeing those thousand day numbers um, anywhere. The same thing on the delinquency side. We need to know when we need to intervene, intervene in the right way. Oh, Judge Carmichael joined us. Hi, Vicki. Hi, Hi Clark. Uh, Hi, Chief. <laughs> Um, having just, I just went down to Clark County to visit Vicki and her team, and I will tell you that drive is not fun. You never know around Muscanita, you're going to have stop and go traffic. Did you have? Yeah. So anyway, you, you you get a pass on that. So my point is the work that you're doing and coming together. All, you're you know represent all three branches of government, and I. And I really hope that we have some significant changes um, that, can, that, we, that we can deal with the improvement. I look at the improvement that was done with JDAI. 
with regard to having a detention risk assessment in my own community? What, what, what are your community standards? And I saw significantly saw the number of kids go down, the number of kids that were waived, the number of kids that went from DOC. Back in the day, we had 14, 1500 children a day per day in Indiana's DOC. Now, do we have somebody from DOC here today? Is, is it like 400? 300. 300. I mean, today. that's fantastic. So, you know, what worked there? And then I want to look at detention beds. How many kids are going to what detention facility? Are there educational? I had a long conversation with um, Judge Mary Harper. She was the one that really got us talking about the Maisie, the mental health screen that we did for kids in the system. So there's a lot of great work to be done. I, I can't thank you enough because I know most of you and I know you have two jobs to do already. Um, and the, the fact that you're willing to come together um, to work to, to, to find better solutions. I like the charge that came um, from this report, I feel like we won the lottery when we got Justice David, who said, you know, nothing like retiring and then taking on this chart. So can we give a round of applause for Justice? <laughs> you know, if any of you saw the musical Hamilton, you have a right, everyone has a right, he needs a right hand man. Well, he's sitting <laughs> to the right of me right now. So thank you for doing what you're doing. I mean, this is going to be generations. I mean, decades, it's going to take some time to come up, you know, with these recommendations, but with this collective brain power and compassion and care for children, because, you know, it takes, a, I've always thought people that love, I could tell people that love working with these kids that come to us um, from all types of situations, often from some, they're all coming from trauma, um, that put their heart and soul in it quite often to get kicked in the face, right? To, mm -hmm. On that, but that you pick yourselves up, they pick themselves up. And to really look at that generation of children that are resilient, that can come out of the system better than when they came in. Mm -hmm. um, and that's our goal. So thank you for what you're doing. I can't wait to see the work. Um, even though I'm not here, I am here in spirit. You have my full support um, and anything you, you need, let me know. So thank you all very much. And that's it. Anything else, <laughs> anything else you need, Captain? No, ma'am. All right. Well, thank you. Very much. Much. <laughs> well, again, good morning. Um, let's take a moment and run around the room and check in. Good morning. Tell us who you are again and, and uh, uh, what agency, what, who, what, what agency you're with. And um, I would ask you all to be truthful and honest and tell all of us whether you were the mega million billionaire from Illinois, <laughs> but, but that probably wouldn't tell me the truth if in fact you won. Uh, I had already spent that money in my head. You ever play that? that uh, my goal, I'll just tell you my strategy. So, so if it ever, if you ever need some advice, my, my seriously, my goal is if I would, and I don't play very often, uh, but when it got up to a billion, I bought two tickets, you know, to double my chance. <laughs> um, and, but, but my strategy is to have it all spent within 30 days. <laughs> Seriously, whether it's an annuity, trust, you know, here's your million, Mary Kay, don't come back. <laughs> you know, here's, and so, so that 30 days later, I'm bulletproof. You know, don't bother me. I don't know who you are. Uh, I'm, I'm still driving. You know, maybe a newer Ford Explorer, but um, I've got I've got nothing that you uh, nothing I can do for you. Thank you very much. Uh, but you all would be taken care of. Um, so, pardon me. But that's reassuring. <laughs> <laughs> if all your other retirement plans go awry, you know the only one chance in a gazillion to win the lottery. It's it's, it's okay. So. Uh, maybe give you a minute uh, of, of comment, but just uh, if there's anything you want to share, otherwise we'll just move around and introduce ourselves. Uh, some of you uh, were unable to attend the first meeting. Some of you were, were here. This is our second meeting. Uh, Mary Kay, welcome. <laughs> Good morning, sir. Thank you. Um, my name is Mary Kay Hudson. I'm the executive director for the Indiana Office of Port Services. I apologize. I was not at the first meeting of this group, but I'm extremely excited to be here and work with you all. Um, 
on this initiative. I know there's a lot of things, there's a lot of moving parts, and I think um, all of us are participating in work groups and a lot of collaboration will come in the coming months. And I'm looking forward to it. Thank you. Thank you, Mary Kay. Hey there, good morning, everyone. Dr. Matt Alzma, I'm with IU School of Medicine. Collaborate with many of you all at the state and local agency level and really happy to be here. And I'm chairing the data committee and we did meet at the end of July and it was great. Nicole Phillips with uh, Bartholomew County Probation. Where? Again? Bartholomew County. <laughs> 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 I have some interest in that one, I don't know. Uh, my name is Devin McDonald. I'm the executive director at the Indiana Criminal Justice Institute. I am Faith Graham, I'm the judge from Cooper County, Indiana. Uh, Julie Whitman, Executive Director of the Commission on Improving the Status of Children, also helping the staff. Good morning, Terry Stigden, Director of the Department of Child Services. Joel Wenicky, I'm the uh, grateful public defender that you let me hang out with you guys. <laughs> Carolyn Foley, I'm Magistrate in Allen Superior Court. Good morning, I'm Nancy Weaver. I'm with the Indiana Office of Court Services and I'm the Director of Indiana's Juvenile Detention Alternatives Initiative, or JDAI. Good morning, Terry Decker. I'm the Executive Director for Division of Youth Services of Department of Corrections. Good morning, Savilla Blackman. I am Deputy Director of Mental Health Services with the Division of Mental Health and Addiction. Vicki Carmichael, as the chief pointed out. <laughs> um, Clark Circuit Court number four, southern end of the state. And I drove from Colorado to Indiana, and it was an Iowa man who bought a ticket in Illinois. So I bought a ticket in Colorado, Nebraska, Iowa, <laughs> Illinois, <Whoa>. and Indiana. <laughs> Did not match a single number. That's my luck. That's, a, that's a good strategy. That's why I'm here. <laughs> Shannon Chambers, I'm with Johnson County. I work for um, our court services division as the training coordinator and with the sheriff's department as a CIT officer. Good morning, Tracy Fitz. I'm the juvenile resource prosecutor for the Indiana Prosecuting Attorney's Council. Hi, James Wilson, CEO of Circle of Indy. Steve Balka, I'm the director of school safety with the Indiana Department of Education. Good morning, Steve David, Indiana Supreme Court. Well, a welcome and welcome to uh, those of you um, uh, sitting and observing, uh, uh, participating uh, here live and anyone that's joining us online. We have a couple guests coming on a little bit later uh, uh, online to, to talk to us for a few minutes. Uh, just a couple of quick observations and we'll conclude the official introduction and, and welcoming remarks. Uh, a trivia, I, I went to uh, all of second grade and part of third grade in Johnson County. Uh, and then as soon as I moved, they closed the elementary school forever. Um, it actually was condemned when I went to school there. And, and if you wanted to be uh, a young honorary kid, uh, you just went under the ropes and went up to the second floor of the school because the second floor was condemned. And everybody would tell you that there's ghosts up there and <laughs> bad things, but there wasn't anything, but it was condemned. And Bartholomew County is, is where I do reside now. And uh, uh, humility is a good thing, but humility is not too far away from stupidity. And sometimes I get the difference. You know, I, I try, to, try to be humble, but sometimes it translates into being stupid. And, and uh, um, since we're gonna spend a lot of time together, I'll, I'll, I'll share with you. Uh, my most embarrassing moment, although there's been many in Bartholomew County, but my most embarrassing moment came my very first jury trial. Tried it in Bartholomew County Superior Court one community I grew up. So this is a jury trial, okay? Uh, so this is in front of all these prospective jurors. I represent the plaintiff. I am brand new, uh, an attorney, but I've been clerking for lawyers during law school. And the judge comes in and I, I stand up, all rise. I got that right. And, and judge comes in. He looked judicious. Judge Long, about 6'6", six, six, great. Uh, please be seated. We'll go on the record. I represented the plaintiff. We'll go on the record here. 
Look at the top. Mr. David, are you ready to proceed? And you know what I did? Yes, you are, we are. She looked at me and I made eye contact and I immediately did what I should have done is looked at my client. My client was seated next to me looking at me like, <laughs> and I sat down and Judge Long said, straight face, just like our judges here minus me would do. Are you sure? <laughs> and I don't think I got up. I just said, yes. <laughs> Won the case, but it was it was uh, one of my most embarrassing moments. Um, the chief, as you know, is extremely extremely busy. Um, we've tried to clone her several times. Um, we're still working on that, um, but she wanted to be here this morning. Um, like you, she recognizes all of the great work that has been done and is being done in Indiana and the opportunity we have to capitalize on that. And uh, in the words of uh, uh, General Colin Powell, turn that into a force multiplier um, uh, and a legacy. So that's, that's our charge, you know that. Um, would remind you to speak into the microphones for recording purposes and things of that nature. Um, You've got the agenda. We're going to talk uh, first about the mission and vision statement. That's an action item we've identified. We're going to have an opportunity for our work group reports passed, to, passed out to the work group chairs, co chairs, however you want to do those reports. Just a suggestion, just a mere suggestion, uh, so that we have some uh, consistency in those, in those reports. And we'll develop those. Um, as we go forward in our subsequent meetings, the next of which is October 12th. Um, so uh, please be advised of that. Uh, we'll go through the work group updates. You have the revised agenda. You have a copy of the, um, if you haven't seen it already, the, the, the uh, proposal action item number two, you have the vision and mission statement action item number one. Uh, again, the revised uh, agenda. Um, we'll also um, have a uh, two guests appear uh, at about 11:10, and that is um, to give you, for informational purposes only, uh, so that everybody on the oversight committee uh, is aware of some of the potential uh, technical assistance assistance that might be available for the work groups. Uh, so we wanted to to give you that that. Uh, uh, information uh, for you to think about uh, and reflect upon and act on to the extent that you uh, determine appropriate. Any major questions? I can't go any further unless you answer this or that. We're good to go, we can proceed. Great. Um, you know, I'm retiring at the end of the month and one of the things that I get to do um, because I'm thinking retirement should be doing what you want to do, uh, not what you have to do. So one of my get to's is this work. Another one of my get to's um, is to serve as a senior judge in our trial courts. And uh, um, you know, that, that takes two things. It takes uh, number one, being asked by a trial court judge. So, so that might be a deal breaker right there. Uh, and then, and then you know, having the time and, and scheduling the time. So uh, I had the incredible um, good fortune to, to uh, be allowed by Judge Dolhanty to, to shadow him for two days in Wayne County, um, his uh, criminal adult and juvenile uh, docket. And, and spend time in the front of the courtroom and time in the back of the courtroom and time with probation officers and deputy prosecuting attorneys and public defenders and family recovery court coordinators and court staff and other judges uh, and, and people in the courthouse. And it was just a tremendous experience. 
I was nervous uh, and I will be nervous to return to the trial court if given the opportunity, but it was, it's just, it just uh, to me, and I wanted to share it with you, it just underscored how important the work that we're doing is and the work that you're already doing. So um, we have action item number one, the, the vision, mission and vision uh, statement. As you recall, at our first meeting, we had a proposed um, mission and vision statement, thought that might be helpful um, to use as talking points, uh, to, to, to sort of not be bound by, but to rally around and, and fall back upon whenever necessary uh, in, in your various meetings and discussions and, and moving forward. Um, we had a, a good discussion and there was a desire to tweak that to, to spend some time. We had some volunteers that met and came to, uh, who, who, who was on the uh, mission and vision statement uh, subgroup? Don't be ashamed, you did great work, okay? Um, and, and so this is that product that um, we wanted you to consider uh, and see if there's any uh, additional changes uh, thoughts, uh, yays, nays, and whether or not we could have a discussion and were we ready to uh, have a, a formal motion uh, to approve that and, and take a vote at, at this meeting today. Uh, Leslie, Julie, is there anything you want to add or any member of that subgroup? Is there anything else you want to share with the oversight committee about how we got to this revised draft? Any participants want to share? Please. Yeah, no, sure. Um, so just to share a little bit about um, why it looks very different than it did um, when we first met is um, uh, calling it a vision statement. There were a lot of words and vision statements are usually pretty succinct and really aspirational. And so we focused on pulling out a vision statement that we hoped will reflect um, the work, um, so would greatly appreciate your input, and then um, really drilled down on the mission and pulled out really what the objectives were. So I think it's a really, it's almost like a charter statement. Um, so I, uh, I it, and it was the most efficient, effective meeting I have ever been to. I mean, I'm not kidding. We got together, we had a, yeah. we had a mission, we got it done, and we actually got the gift of time um, back because it didn't even take the entire time. So a uh, great group working together. I really appreciate everyone that, that showed up. Um, so any questions or any input, anything that we missed, we would greatly appreciate your uh, feedback. Yes. Yes, sir. If I may uh, piggyback off of that. Absolutely. Uh, to put strong emphasis on the vision and mission statement and why we collectively came together is that we're looking to not change things in society and more so with the juvenile justice. We're looking to evolve and see things moving forward. So when we look at the difference between change and evolution, change is a factor that can go backwards, progressive or regressive. But when you evolve, it continues to move forward. And that's what we do. Thank you. Any other thoughts? I would share with you that that I participated, but every time I, I was trying to say something, they kept saying, just stay with you on mute. We can't hear you. There's a technical <laughs> issue. So I think that contributed to it, it being such a... Uh, uh, an efficient, productive <laughs> meeting. <laughs> Anything else? Is there a motion to... to... May, may I offer a suggestion for the group to consider? Absolutely. Um, under the mission statement on bullet point four, I would um, offer, I, I believe language is powerful, and I would offer a slight change so that that would read increase racial equity and decrease disparities for Black comma, brown, and other opportunity youth. Yes. The term disadvantaged, um, if I were a youth, I don't, I'm not sure that I'd be comfortable being identified as someone who is disadvantaged. And we are, um, if we can identify youth who we previously used to refer to as at risk or disadvantaged or things that were negative and frame that in a way that was more asset-based, um, I think that's a, a, a really nice way to evolve the work that's been done and that would be my suggestion thank you nancy could you read your corrected or suggested bullet point yes uh, bullet point four would read increase racial equity 
and decrease disparities for black, comma, brown, and other opportunity youth. Okay. Anyone have any objection uh, to that? I'm seeing none, so I conclude that is an improvement to a very good product. Thank you, Nancy. Is there a motion to adopt this mission, vision and mission statement with that change, or are there any other comments or discussion? I would move to adopt the amendment. Thank you, sir. Is there a second? A second. Tracy, you 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 um, <laughs> beat, beat the judge just <laughs> today in, on this motion. <laughs> At this moment, yeah, it may come back to haunt you. But right this moment, second. Um, any other discussion? All those in favor, say aye. Aye. Any opposed? Uh, uh, it's unanimous. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you to the group. Thank you to the group. Thank you, Nancy, for catching that uh, a very a good and making that very good suggestion. Uh, so this, this is our vision and mission uh, statement. Uh, again, thank you all very much. Um, what we'd like to do is move into the work group updates. Um, and we will go in the order set forth, uh, nothing magical on the revised agenda. So data, behavior, health, grants, diversion, transitional services, screening, uh, juvenile probation standards, and the updates gave to the work group chairs, co-chairs, just uh, a couple of uh, suggestions, uh, but this is your time to report uh, whatever you would like to uh, report on concerning your work and where you are and how you're feeling about that. A couple of things that wanted everybody to keep in mind and maybe at the conclusion of the work group updates, we, we can talk about these ideas if anyone feels strongly about any of them for or against. Uh, or we can continue to have this conversation moving forward. Uh, but uh, such things as what do you need as work groups going forward as you develop, as you come together, as you begin your work? Um, one thought is perhaps a convening via Zoom uh, with all of the work groups in September, the chairs, excuse me, the chairs sort of a, an opportunity to cross pollinate, uh, ensure communications, whether one meeting in September would be beneficial, uh, whether um, we should schedule uh, work group chairs meetings and have those uh, dates so that if there's a benefit to having a meeting for a short period of time, because we need to talk about what you're doing, what we're doing, uh, how we keep from duplicating, how we really uh, leverage from each other. If we don't need a meeting, we don't need a meeting. Uh, we'll have professional staff. We'll take minutes, uh, even if you're not able to, to attend, we can share those with you. You know, what would be best for you? Uh, certainly would share any of those minutes with all members of the oversight committee. Uh, but just thinking in terms of, of as you move forward, what helps you optimize the work of your uh, work group um, and, and that we're, we're flexible on, on how you want to do that. I've also asked the work group chairs at the conclusion of their uh, report to the oversight committee to give us um, their current assessment as to whether or not they're green or amber. Mean, green, mean, green means we're good to go, we're happy, okay? Amber means there's a little anxiety, a little trepidation because if there is, that's fine. If we can help you today or we can plan who needs to meet and who needs to talk about what to, to, to uh, move that to green, okay? 
Um, nothing special about that. Just made that up. If you don't like it, we'll change it. Um, but, but the goal is to be green, but, but it's more important to, to, be, to be honest. Is that an acceptable process? Um, so let's just, anybody, you want to just uh, put your hands up in the air, get your fingers ready to point, and we'll just, we'll just circle around, and then we'll just point at the first work group. Um, <laughs> Doctor, are you ready? I am. Glad to be pointed too. Um, so I have the pleasure of chairing this data committee along with Mary Kay Hudson, co-chair, who brought draft meeting notes. So I really appreciate that. So we met on the 28th. Everyone that was invited to attend to be a member of the data work group um, accepted. So we did talk as a group about the mix of individuals that we have of local, of state, of agencies, and is there anyone not at the table that really needs to be there? No one was identified in terms of individuals, agencies, local agencies, but there was a discussion about individuals with lived experience and what is that going to look like? So we described kind of the process right now that we are undertaking. Um, so Mary Kay provided an overview of the Youth Justice Committee and just the House bill in general and actually provided it physically to individuals from the committee and went through it, which was really helpful. I think it was really nice overview to actually look at what the statute specifically says. I spent some time talking about the data workgroup charge and there were a couple of different discussion items that came out of that. One was the research agenda. So what is that gonna look like? And, what are we actually explicitly going to be researching? So there were some questions about what that can look like. Um, and then we also had some discussions about um, kind of the difference of local needs and issues around data, because that always comes up. So what's accurate, what can be gathered, as well as state needs and options that are there locally. Um, so data quality is just Part of the discussion that always happens with these different discussions. Um, I really do think it would be helpful to think about with the work groups that we have, how we are going to be interfacing with each other. So there were questions from our group about the different groups that are meeting and how data will be talking with diversion because what is accurate data and how can we get data. So I think a convening on a regular basis will be helpful with chairs, but also for us to be clear about communicating back with our work group members about what's happening. And the meetings are gonna be available, minutes will be available, they can log on and see what's happening here as well. But I think that communication across groups is gonna be really important. We did approve this electronic communication attendance policy. We do plan on meeting monthly. We're still working on that date, getting there closely. Um, and I guess my good assessment right now is green. I think as we get into this really strong agenda, and especially as we look at kind of a data plan in early spring, late winter, it's, 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 a, it's a strong, it's gonna be a rough ride. It won't be a rough ride. It's gonna be, it's an ambitious plan that we have, right? So there's a lot of work that needs to be done. I like that word. Yeah, ambitious. yeah, ambitious, right? I don't, I don't understand decoupage. <laughs> <laughs> ambitious, I could. Ambitious. Um, yeah. Clarifications, clarity on that, Mary Kay? Um, no, I would also agree with Dr. Alzma. I, I also see this in the green. I think we're in a good position. We have some fantastic um, work group members with a lot of experience around data in different contexts. Um, and I think that with the tasks associated with this work group, um, there'll be some things that will be kind of uh, first priorities that we'll wanna work on and subject to Dr. Alzma's um, and the work group's uh, approval of this, I think that there is some room for, to, for, to have a plan to develop a plan. Um, because I think this is a very, very large undertaking when we're talking about data. And so I think, you know, there's kind of first things first, and then there are probably stages to this, especially as we're looking at um, ultimately broadening our data collection capabilities, working with other entities on data matching and data sharing. Um, this is kind of a long haul proposition. So uh, I think that ultimately the plan would have some um, deliverables associated with it, but there could be some things that need to be staged out over time so that we make sure that we don't forget anything. Thank you very much. 
Any questions by anyone or? Yes, sir. Hi, uh, Dr. Osmond. Uh, to you and to the group on the collection of data. Uh, when you're looking at data, are you guys looking at the root causes, which kind of stimulate the, everything else, right? Everything is kind of stimulated for that. So when you're looking at that data, looking at the key root causes, and I'm looking at it more so from an economic standpoint. Mm -hmm. And so what are they going for going through from an economic standpoint, which kind of enhance the ability to survive the most environment? Make sense? Yeah, that does make sense. I think that's a really great question. Um, that maybe ties into the research question, um, really understanding like the social determinants of health. Right. Mm -hmm. And is that really driving some of the behavior that we're seeing from young people? Obviously some of that data is difficult to get to with some of the data systems that we have in place. But I think that could be some of the research questions that really drives us what's driving some of this behavior. And then how can we target those evidence-based interventions to target social determinants of health and other drivers? So. Great question. I think the research where we're going to have that tie in there. Yeah, and I say that because of the data that I work with now with all the funders and whatnot throughout the state, mm -hmm. um, as you talked about earlier, the data is not always quantified and really hit hard. And so, we, <laughs> thank you, Chilling. So, if we're looking at the the root causes, right, you would come up with the strong collective data that follows behind that. So, again, that gives even your data collection a strong root cause base. Fantastic. Yeah. Let's keep this um, as uh, at the forefront as we're talking, right? So what's really driving individuals to get involved within the system? Um, great clarification. Thanks. Yeah. So James, I mean, I think that's one of the things that when we look at the research agenda, we do want to cover. And for example, um, the Management Performance Hub is represented on our group. Mm -hmm. And they have access to the types of data that you're talking about when we're talking about um, socioeconomic status and those types of things. And so being able to ultimately match that information with what we are seeing in education or services or in the courts is going to be a big component of our discussions moving forward. So we're very Thank aware of that too. Thank you. Okay. I just wanted to point out so that the committee knows that the data we collect and review going forward may very well be different than the data that was collected and used um, through the Juvenile Justice Reform Task Force that kind of led to the legislation and then this committee, because it, it was drawn from only a portion of the Quest counties in the state, and it, it was not reflective of statewide data in, in both of our case management systems, so not, not to be surprised if the data looks quite a bit different going forward. So Excellent point. It's, this is all the LA alts in free time, right? Right. We, 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 we're going to get this right um, and, and uh, re reflective. Excellent. Any other questions? I have one question. Yes. Do you guys have a prosecutor in your work group? Sorry. At this time, we don't have a prosecutor in our work group. We have. <laughs> I think we have concerns sometimes about. Um, access to data, especially, and also just what's being captured, and maybe there's things we're capturing that we could put into the, the system, so. We've had a couple of requests from different agencies and individuals about more individuals to bring on to the data committee. Um, we are trying to have a fairly svelte group, not decoupage, <laughs> but right, so kind of bring it, let's increase vocab. Um, so let's have a discussion offline if kind of informal sure. conversations, meeting notes is sufficient um, because we've had that conversation with several different agencies and individuals. I think, yeah, I think everyone has concerns, uh, state, local, and the rest. So let's, let's talk. Very open to expanding. Okay, over. Cirilla? Yes. You want uh, to we talk had about our behavioral health. Oh, absolutely. Uh, we had our behavioral health uh, meeting uh, yesterday, and I'm going to say green all the way. I uh, was very excited that the invitations that were sent, uh, everyone confirmed. We had quorum, which is very exciting. Um, uh, my co chair, Dr. Kristen Doss. Uh, said everyone at ease talking about we are a group that want to be very transparent about what's happening uh, within the system. We talked a lot about assessments that DOC provide and how traumatizing it can be for youth, 
having to go to another place for to get an assessment and being there anywhere from 14 days to 30. Uh, fortunately, we have someone representing our community mental health centers uh, in our group and also talked about looking at those assessments that DOC has and comparing those to the assessment the CMAC has and see what are the differences. And so we had, I think, a pretty robust discussion around that and uh, looking forward to many more bringing in examples of that. Uh, we did cover roles and responsibilities of the group and, with, and the subgroups, and we reviewed the, the uh, communication policy for meetings. And I just can't say enough for Julie Whitman and Nick supporting our group. Julie gave a very nice overview of the whole process and how we got there uh, in terms of behavioral health. And uh, we also talked about how will the other groups cross over, integrate as we plan uh, for a statewide behavioral health plan because everyone's pieces are going to be integral yeah. in building this plan. Uh, the other thing we talked about, um, I believe in working smarter, not harder. Mm -hmm. uh, we presented a behavioral health state court leadership brief with guidelines and principles that outline very nicely uh, to the work we're doing and gives us a structure and foundation. Uh, one of our first steps is looking at mapping behavioral health gaps within the state so we can begin to formulate a game plan on how to address issues. Um, so we'll be gathering that each week. We gave our group assignments. We already scheduled our next meeting for September 13th um, to follow up. So I'm feeling very excited and good about that. Um, Nick offered to create a library of resources where the group can con contribute and use in terms for their subcommittees. Uh, it was really great. Super, thank you. Questions? We're talking about, Nancy, please. Um, the, um, I think you call it a state brief that, is that something that's available that, um, on, uh, that you could send or? On the team site? Thank yes, you. on teams that came out March uh, 2020. Thank you. I just happened to be researching and started looking at those guidelines and principles and thought, oh, we kind of do this and this and this. And I thought, this is great. I don't have to spend a lot of time, given our timeline, creating, starting from scratch. Uh, the other thing we did talk about uh, is the Bipartisan Safer Communities Act, that there's gonna be a lot of funding coming to the states uh, regarding safer communities and programs and initiatives that address violence in the community, better access to health and mental health services via telehealth as well. So we're gonna be looking at all of that to see how we can best leverage that funding. It's great, great. Um, so I don't have to look and see the text that says, hey, you're supposed to remind everybody about Teams. Thank you. That was a scripted uh, inserted conversation there. We, we do have this incredible Teams resource where we're putting everything. Um, do want to to underscore to everyone, uh, particularly the work group chairs that might, you know, be trying to. They're, you're managing your work group. You're managing these meetings. You're managing trying to communicate, cross communicate. Uh, two two things before we proceed. One is um, our professional staff. They are incredible. We will be meeting Julie and Leslie, professional staff. Myself will be meeting regularly. Uh, to, to, to help with that process. Um, if you, whoever you are on the oversight committee, if, if you love teams, but it would really help you uh, to get an email of everybody's minutes of the last meeting before your meeting, we'll, we'll, we'll accommodate. Don't, 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 don't worry about that. Just let us know whatever we can do to make 
your job as easy as possible. Yes, ma'am. The other point we made is that the core members will have access to teams, but not subcommittees, because that's just too many people. So the communication will roll up through the committee members. We'll collect some of your, as we are, uh, the comments you're making, sort of a, uh, not a best practices, but just, just to circulate that. So, you know, whether they're called checklists or just, hey, this helped me, I, uh, so we don't have to uh, duplicate those efforts uh, if, if necessary to avoid that. Thank you. Devin, Grants, sir, good morning. Good morning, thank you very much. Um, yeah, my name is Devin McDonald. Again, I'm the director at the Criminal Justice Institute. And I chair the grants work group along with uh, Danielle from DOC. Um, so we did meet on July 29th. We had a pretty robust conversation. I uh, candidly was anticipating a quick meeting. Uh, however, it turned into well over two hours. Um, so we had a, had a great meeting, lots of discussion. Um, Julie was uh, joined us and provided some great background on the um, how we got to where we were and, and why we were there and so on and so forth. So thank you very much to that. As far as the group membership goes, uh, we are a growing group. Uh, unfortunately, not everyone that we reached out to was able to join us. Uh, we do have some unofficial members uh, of the group that can uh, willing to provide some feedback, um, but we do have an ever growing group. We've got a meeting tomorrow with some folks or actually later this afternoon with some folks to hopefully try to get them uh, see what their involvement could potentially be in the group would be very helpful as well. Um, kind of one of the larger things that we talked about was really the very, very tight timeline uh, for our particular group. Um, you know, having to have the, the report and recommendations done by January 1st, um, skipping all the way to the end of my report, I would say that has uh, kind of a amber color to it. Um, not necessarily because it's, it's too difficult, but just the timeline. Uh, it's a lot of work in a very short period of time. Uh, with that, though, I think after our next meeting, we'll probably be feeling a little bit better. Um, we did talk about the grant programs quite a bit. Uh, one of the things that we talked about uh, at length as well is data, um, how we can use data, what data can be useful for, um, for us to collect through the grant process. Um, what do our metrics need to be or want to be for the grant process? Uh, beyond just numbers of individuals served and so on and so forth. We also just had discussion over that, uh, you know, unlike some, some other grants um, that, are, that are out there, um, these particular grants can't necessarily be performance-based measures um, or, hey, you guys only had two kids that you served, so we're going to cut your funding next year because you don't need all that. Uh, one, that's not how the grants are structured. Uh, but two, it just doesn't necessarily make sense to do that, at least not right away. So uh, we had some discussion on that. Um, we also recommended and had some discussion and the group kind of agreed. Uh, our, my recommendation was to do a two-year timeline for these grants up front. Uh, so when the grantees eventually do their application process, because that's how the biennium works, I do have the ability uh, since CJI will be administering these funds to obligate the entirety of the two-year uh, up front. Um, that way nothing reverts or anything like that. Um, but it also helps, especially at the local level when the, the locals go to their county councilor, whoever that may be, um, to have a two year budget in place. Um, so uh, I think we'll be doing that. Um, had some, again, some, some discussion on um, Uh, potential like MOUs and things like that that will require the counties to provide uh, up front when they do their grant processes. Uh, the timeline for those grants, um, when we'll, CGI potentially will look to release those solicitations, which again kind of adds to the anxiousness related to the timelines a little bit. We'll be, uh, if everything goes well through the legislature, we'll actually be releasing grant funds uh, really before all some of the work for this group is even done. Um, so again, that can be a little interesting as well. Uh, we did also adopt the electronic meeting policy uh, and we did set uh, four future meetings kind of with the objective to have a draft report done by um, kind of the, I think we talked about the 9th of December uh, to have the draft report and draft recommendations ready. So again, like I said, a very, very tight timeline. Thank you very much. Mm -hmm. Questions? Judge, I do. Um, Mr. McDonald, your piece really interests me a lot uh, with the grants. I work with funders again, and uh, this is what I do in my organization. 
And so with the grants, I want to make sure, because what we're seeing right now in the funding world uh, is that a lot of organizations getting the dollars is not directly connected to the people. And so the data uh, can also reflect that as well to strong incomes, uh, excuse me, strong outcomes uh, and putting families on strong paths to success. So if we're looking at um, how we're going to distribute dollars, right, uh, to organizations, make sure that it has a strong grassroots effect on that. Um, and making sure the grassroots are, are strongly involved because they're directly connected with the people. They know them more than anybody else. And I'm not seeing that um, across the state more often than not. CICF has been trying to uh, lead the way on that. And I respect that by all means, but I think it's up to us to kind of set that tone on there. Yeah, so to address that, thank you very much. We did talk about for a little while uh, throughout the meeting, kind of diversity and grant making, um, funding some historically non-traditional programs. So we did talk about that. Um, there, with that though, the, the issue will be how the grants necessarily may be distributed and, and coming from a grant making background. Um, if these grants are considered to be reimbursement based grants that can sometimes be very difficult for small nonprofits to receive because they have to float the funds until we can provide the reimbursement. Um, I see that monthly, unfortunately. Uh, but with that though, to your point, that is recognized and that sometimes some of these local um, as you've mentioned, grassroots organizations can provide great services uh, to the counties or to the individuals. So to your point, yeah, we did talk about that and how we could potentially include some traditional, traditionally non-funded programs uh, through these grants. Again, because I, again, I do this work, so I'm definitely tight on this one. This funding world is my cycle too, by all means. And so the metrics on this is unrealistic to just be honest with you. Um, I'm dealing with, I build grassroots right now as we speak throughout the city and throughout the state. I build grassroots organizations and I work with the major institutes the dollar distribute to in the counselors. What we're looking at right now is the metrics, how the metrics being laid out and how we're collectively working with the grassroots to meet those metrics. We're, the problem that we have a lot of time is say, hey, we put the RFPs out and say, go apply. And we give small base informational pieces. If we want to make sure that the dollars are properly distributed, we need to go out and about and work directly locally with the counties uh, set up informational sessions, sessions. I wanted to be on your group for a reason because I'm seeing this right now all across the city. And so set up informational sessions, things of that nature. Lily just gave out $100 million to the African-American League, right? One of the biggest funds in the state. And so I'm seeing this right now working with the grassroots and working with the institutions. So with that being said, if we're being good stewards of the dollar, uh, we need to look at it from every perspective and point to make sure the dollars are actually getting to and the services are being provided. Thank you. Yep. Thank you. Yes, Tracy. I have a follow up question, I guess, a little bit um, kind of going to what James was talking about. Have you had a discussion about or did anyone bring up how you're going to work with my work group, which is the diversion work group? Because I know since we're tasked with looking at making sure there's a full array of programming and that we're, you know, we're starting protocols and policies that kind of push people to using these a little bit more where maybe they haven't been. Um, I don't. I know it's a tight timeline and maybe your timeline's kind of ahead of what we might be able to get to there, but we maybe we're gonna need to retrofit it so yes. that we work those into what's going on. So I don't know if I don't know if we're represented on your committee or not. Yeah, so that we, we might we, need we did talk, talk about that, how we will need information from the data group, we'll need information from the behavioral health group, we'll need information from diversion group for a lot of different reasons. Um so yeah, we did contemplate all that. Um, this group could be a group where I could easily have 50 people. And it, it's one of those where unfortunately the timeline's so tight, having such a large group may not necessarily be effective in getting the work done. Um, but yeah, we, we did discuss how our group really needs to be fed and a lot of the information that we have, especially as it comes to developing the RFP, how much money is currently being spent on these types of programs around the state. Um, you know, to that point, if programs are already funding, those aren't necessarily the pro already funded. Those aren't necessarily the programs we're looking to fund as these grants move forward. Right. We really need to look more to expansion. So, yes, uh, we have considered all that, and, and we need to. Uh, we'll, we'll need the data from all these work groups as you guys meet. And that is part of the plan: is to get with everybody. It's one of my meetings this afternoon. Is to talk about funding and how much money is already being spent on these types of programs, so we can help kind of guide the process and the recommendations for them. The remote policy that, that those of you that are approving will, uh, I think, be very helpful for all of us, particularly me, because 
I'm going to be uh, sitting in on all of the meetings, uh, either live or remotely. And remotely is a lot easier to, to sit in on a work group meeting. Um, and, and, and also uh, recall that, that I think what I'm hearing thus far is, is at a minimum to set up this late August, early September chairs meeting and, and maybe just go ahead and set up uh, meetings that, that uh, if you can join, great. If you have a, a desire, great. If not, we'll still have the meeting and share the information and share with everybody that's not attending. Um, and also, as much as I think it would, it would be very helpful and, and it would encourage the, the chairs and, and to, to, to uh, what I would call finalize your work group uh, probably by the end of the month. Obviously, it's open to sharing, right, conversations. Tracy, you know, it, you may have somebody on that's a prosecutor on a work group or you may not. Uh, but that doesn't mean they can't share and they can't get input and people can't take and look at what's going on you know, for an in and out or as a practical matter from my constituents perspective, this is problematic. Oh, great. We haven't, you know, thank you. That makes, that's a good idea. We can make that change. Right. Uh, I so, don't want to duplicate. Like if he's right. going to get information right. about where the DCS dollars or the, those dollars are being spent. Right. My group wants that too, because right. we, you know, I just don't want to duplicate when we start because we think, are all under a tight timeline. I think that underscores, uh, regardless of the timeline, the value in, 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 in collaborative sharing of that information. And, you know, there may be 10 things that one work group is focused on. One of those 10 may be very, very critical for you or two. So uh, all, all the more. Great conversation. Uh, we need to move that to the end if, uh, to keep on the, the time schedule. And I'll, I want to make sure we get our, our guests that are joining us, uh, uh, make sure we get them in and out on their time. Um, so if, if it's acceptable, we'll come to diversion. Yes. Um, so we have identified and confirmed our members and it is a large group at the moment of 14 people, plus our uh, co-chairs and staff. So um, part of that was on purpose because we really want to make sure we're including um, a diverse group of individuals. We have probation judges, um, people that are working with providers um, to really talk about and see where we are all around the state on diversion. Um, so we are excited about that. We've scheduled our first meeting for next Thursday, August 18th. Um, and we have provided all of our members with some materials for that meeting. They've got a copy of the legislation with all of the diversion areas highlighted. We sent them the PowerPoint from um, the diversion work group under the Children's Commission and the work that they've already done so they can see what, what's already happened there. And we've also sent them our tentative goals and deliverables so they can look at all that and be ready at our first meeting. Um, we plan on scheduling out all of our meetings at that first meeting so we can be ready to go because um, it is an ambitious, ambitious uh, set of things to do here. Um, and we plan on one of the challenges that I will point out, I don't know if everyone else as it's going on is just getting people to meet in person. It was really difficult even to get the first meeting going. So um, we're gonna obviously get that remote um, working group thing passed, but we're also probably gonna have smaller work groups so we can meet in person and maybe do a few site visits and things because we really wanna know on the ground how this is going to work and what's missing in diversion and how we can encourage more people to use a wider array, array of programs. So um, I would say that we are green. We're feeling pretty good about where we are. Um, we have several people who were already on that commission diversion work group. So at this point, um, I'll go with green. It might change after our first meeting and we'll let you know. <laughs> and you let us know what you need to yeah. do everything so you our can staff to make sure it stays green or if it's <laughs> amber, it doesn't stay amber very long. Um, Let's see, transitional services. That's me. <laughs> um, we also have not had our first meeting. It's scheduled for next week. I'll blame that on my co-chair quietly, but anyway. <laughs> <laughs> he felt the need to go on vacation. <laughs> uh, anyway, um, so we have uh, reached out to people. Some people also told us uh, no thank you, but we do have 15 people 
um, slated for our committee. So we meet next Wednesday, um, trying to look through professional staff. I pointed this out to Mary Kay yesterday. Um, Tyler and Joseph are so lucky to be stuck with me and they have been awesome. So I can't say enough just already um, for what for what they have done to help. So um, geez, what else was I gonna say? We're, we're, we're good, we're green. <laughs> and 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 we can't say enough about um you all and we can't say enough about our professional staff who, who who really have done some arm wrestling to be involved in this uh that want to be a part of this so so thank you terry for that questions for terry you, you can ask her she'll tell you um, <laughs> Yes. <laughs> Screening, Shannon. Um, so our work group is meeting Friday after the JDAI um, <laughs> meeting. <laughs> so we're meeting Friday. Um, most of our people have um, accepted the invite. We're waiting on a few to get back with us. Um, we had a legislator that obviously was in session, so they have not got back with us yet. A few people that were on vacation um, that we've left messages for. Um, Judge Trevino and I kind of split up that group and have been making personal phone calls to them and then following up with an email afterwards. Um, Michelle has been wonderful as our support staff, our professional staff. Um, she has a lot of insight on this. I've worked with her a lot on IES and stuff. So um, doing great things there. I think right now we're green. Um, we've got all of our draft stuff ready for Friday and it's going out to all of our work group members and we'll be meeting Friday in person right after the meeting. Anything we can do for you today? I don't think so today, thank you. Uh, straighten up I-65 <laughs> so that the judge has a little bit easier route back home. <laughs> Questions of Shannon? Judge, anything you want to bring to our attention today on juvenile probation standards? And uh, we, uh, I'm co-chairing uh, that with Judge Lesh. We thank you. Sorry, um, I'm ordinarily not told that people can't hear me. It's for the um, remote. They can't. They really can't. Hear <laughs> okay. Uh, so I'm co-chairing uh, that committee with Judge Lesh. Uh, we have not had our first meeting that is uh, scheduled for the 19th. Uh, we do have all of our committee members who have committed uh, to participating. We did have a little difficulty because uh, screening stole one of our folks who had previously <laughs> said yes, but that's okay since Judge Trevino is my boss, I forgave her. <laughs> Uh, so we, we did have uh, a couple last minute substitutions, um, which pushed our initial meeting uh, back to the 19th. Um, we have, uh, I also have incredible staff members. Colleen has just been an absolute dream to work with. I'm also really fortunate that Jenny Bauer is uh, actually on our committee. Um, so Jenny and I have had numerous conversations uh, about how our timeline is going to be a little bit tighter because probation standards are have to be ultimately adopted by the judicial conference and so we've had conversations with judge Mulehausen, uh, who is chairing the probation committee uh, jenny is staff uh, for that probation committee i'm also on probation committee so we've been trying to have those conversations ahead of the first meeting of how all of this is going to fit in the numerous groups landscape for the coming year. So I, I think we're green at this point. I think we've got a good path forward. And we also have all of our documents up on teams uh, for parties to take a look at. Super. Thank you. Questions? Is that helpful? I mean, we'll, we'll develop this. You have input. What uh, certainly uh, we have affirmed the necessity, the, the how critical it is to keep that communication open going forward. And we've offered some suggestions. Um, think about that if you have any other ideas on how to capitalize uh, on the communication. Uh, if, you, if you are strongly in favor of the uh, set, set the meetings, uh, uh, if there's something that would help you uh, and we need to customize that, that's great. Uh, but we'll also, uh, if you have a great idea, share that with everybody else. Um, um, Again, 
I'm meeting with our, our professional staff, the family, and um, we'll set up probably, unless you tell me otherwise, set up a series of work group chairs meetings. But certainly, I uh, want to set up one. I want to kind of wait till everybody at least had their, their teams together, their work groups. Um, so that, that's, that's great. Uh, again, um, this, is a <clears throat> this is a team effort. So even though some of us have a more robust a timeline, we're all in this together. So, so uh, we're only as good as our, our weakest link. So all of us um, uh, are necessary to each other in the collective success. Um, we have an agenda ac action item, uh, the committee approval, the proposed work plan for um, this unfinished business we had discussing whether or not we wanted <coughs> each of the work groups to try to incorporate um, family and youth engagement or whether we wanted to proceed separately. But in a schedule now, what I'd like to do is move that. We have plenty of time. Um, and so when our guests come on, uh, Leslie, Julie, you can let me know. Is that what you were going to? Uh, yeah, I was hoping we'd stay afterwards and, and discuss the minutes, but no, great suggestion. So if you have a chance while we're waiting for our guests to join us, um, we sent those to you. We're posting those ASAP um, to Teams. And if you are comfortable, I'll entertain a motion to approve the minutes. I would make that motion. You got it. You beat Tracy. Uh, thank you, Judge. Is there a second? Aye. Second. Faith. Judge, thank you. All those in favor say aye. Aye. Opposed, nay, or stomp your feet or pound your fist. I don't see any nays. I see unanimous affirms, so the minutes are approved. Great, we're waiting for uh, Gail D, I believe. Just information uh, for informational purposes. Um, if you see me suddenly sit up straight, that's because I've gotten a text from um, one of the uh, legislators uh, says I'm watching. So hello, <laughs> Representative McNamara. Uh, so I'm gonna try to sit up straight. Uh, I'll try not to think this is my water bottle. Um, <laughs> it's not charcuterie. That you're both on. Great. So, hey, welcome, Lisa. Welcome, Gail D. Um, this is the Youth Justice Oversight Committee. On our agenda item, uh, this is our second meeting. And if you can't hear us, uh, let me know. Uh, but we're primarily just asking for you to share a few minutes of your time with us. We put this on the agenda for you, members of the Youth Oversight uh, committee to give you a, a sample uh, of what could be um, a resource uh, that might be available to you uh, as you go through these processes in your various work groups. Understanding that there are resources available, you may or may not need them. Um, much work is being done in Indiana in many of these areas. Uh, some of it's geographically dependent or successful. Um, and obviously we're looking at a big picture. We thought it would be helpful to you uh, to invite um, Gail D. Mumford, who's a senior associate juvenile justice strategy group with the Annie E. Casey Foundation and has been with Annie E. Casey since 2006. Um, uh, she started when she was just out of, out of high school. And uh, also Lisa Macaluso, <laughs> many of you know Gail D and, and uh, Lisa Macaluso. Lisa is a uh, consultant uh, with the Annie E. Casey Foundation. And what we thought it would be helpful is to invite these two individuals. They were gracious enough to take uh, 10 or 15 minutes of their time 
uh, give you a little background on, on the Annie E. Casey Foundation and what it does. And, and again, uh, for informational purposes, as you move forward uh, and you're looking around, determining whether or not you need or want some additional technical assistance or expertise for a short period of time, uh, whatever your menu of options are, internally in the state, outside of the state, uh, wanted to, to at least give you an idea of what that might look like and what's out there. So does that, does that make sense to everybody? Gail D, Lisa, can you, can you hear us and see us? I can, I can, yes, I can. So welcome, we've got about 20 minutes and, and um, uh, we really appreciate your time. So I think that's my cue, right? Is that my cue? Yes, All right. Thank you so much um, for the invitation. And to for those in the room who I don't know, um, um, my name is Gail D, which they call me. Um, I work at do work at the Casey Foundation in the Juvenile Justice Strategy Group. Uh, the Casey Foundation is a natural uh, philanthropy, and most of you probably already know. And in short, we're, our work is about building brighter futures for children, whether that's children that are in the juvenile justice uh, system or children that sort of caught up in child welfare or cross somewhere between both. And then all the supports that children need to thrive and be successful. So some of the focus of our work are in communities, family economic success. So the, the, the mission and work of the uh, foundation is broad. And that I've been doing, uh, as the judge says, since high school, I thought since grade school. But anyway, <laughs> uh, before, prior to joining the Casey Foundation, which is where I really cut my ju juvenile justice teeth, is in the state of Missouri, where I was the deputy director of the youth corrections uh, system. So I worked at the deepest end of the system, um, trying to sort of change the approach um, to what happens to young people who are removed from that homes, communities, and families. And so now at Casey, when I came to Casey, the work shifted to the front end of the system. So what can we do to sort of uh, limit, um, if possible, eliminate the penetration of the young people to that part of the system? So now I'm couched in a unit that's called Center for Systems Innovation. All these things are not gonna make any sense. You're not gonna remember, but I work in the Juvenile Justice Strategy Group and our sole focus are young people that are or at or coming into the attention of the system. Before I dive into all of the Casey do's and what it does and how it does, um, um, thank you for inviting us to um, the conversation. Um, I've read some of the legislation and, and, and if I could be real casual with you, there is some real deliciousness in it. Like some amazing <laughs> things that you are gonna be uh, uh, creating um, for the young people in your state who you know better than I will ever know. And for the luxury to have time to plan, that is like win, 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 win. Uh, how we might be a part of that or not be a part of that. Um, I think whether we're directly involved or sort of we watch from the sideline, I believe again that we're gonna learn from the state of Indiana. As most of you know, we've been partners with Indiana for quite a long time from our beginning in Marion County with the juvenile detention alternatives initiatives that span to from one county to state level embraced and that work continues. Um, you have taught people from across the nation how to do state level uh, reform and to lead this forward, particularly about those young people that approach the front of the system. And you've also been engaged in some of our deep end work with the uh, kids that are sort of at this position. And again, we have brought uh, to that work as much as we have learned and we uh, expect that that will continue. Uh, today, I'd like to focus just a little bit on how the work is organized in the unit that I am in and just pitch just for a second around this notion of diversion. And then I'm gonna hand to my esteemed colleague, Lisa Macaluso, who works in the trenches um, and does work for the Casey Foundation as a consultant, but has um, engagements that she has that, that extends beyond our work. <clears throat> and so the way we're organized in juvenile justice now, is not just 
JDAI or the front end of the system anymore. We are shifting our focus to look at diversion and prevention. That diversion, considering it from the community lens. And we're also holding and maintaining our work around system transformation, which is some of our probation work lives there, the work that we call the deepest end of the system and our JDAI front door. So that's, JDI is like the underbelly of everything we do. If you can't get the front door right, you're just gonna append good practices to bad parts of work. Um, and so now in our diversion work, we're trying to do um, two things. If I could share a slide, if, let me see if this works. Let's see. That work? Yes. Can you see it? So in what we're doing in our, what we're learning about our probation transformation work, we're, we're approaching it from two ends now in case system led, which is the child has some touch in the system and we're trying to do a more around diverting them out. And we're looking at what would diversion look like if it were community led? If there was an entity or an opportunity that it did not have or was not connected to system touch. We are learning there and exploring. We don't have evidence or anywhere to point just yet, but we believe that we will be partners with you and others as we learn about what is the role and work of community when we think about probation? And two things when we think about probation and, and diversion, I'm thinking about diversion, we wanna raise the ceiling. We wanna raise the, raise the ceiling and the floor. We wanna expand the opportunity for young people to be diverted from the system. And we also wanna make it hard for young people not to be considered for diversion. Like that should be, or we're hoping that we leave with, that is the first thing that comes to mind. There are some people, that are doing places that are doing the work in Maryland where I live and I do my work, they approach this through um, some legislation that they recently passed. And we can connect you to all these places that I'm gonna mention. And I won't go into uh, detail there. And, and there are lots of feelings about what Maryland did. So again, this is about Indiana's work because Indiana knows Indiana's children the best. All we can do is say, here are some samples that you consider as you determine what's gonna work best for you. In Maryland, they made it, uh, they changed rules uh, from how they um, um, engage with victims, like that they had to be notified or in, informed if they were kids were gonna be uh, considered for probation. So just by changing one word in legislation, it created more opportunity for young people to be considered. And we're not, when I'm talking about diversion, I'm not talking about young people who never should be touched by the system anyway. I mean, we gotta be real careful when we start to think about that because sometimes we can do these simple offenses or small offenses and, and give ourselves big pets because we're moving forward in diverting when we never should have touched those kids anyway. I'm talking about those young kids that mm, verge on the heads of somewhat of seriousness um, and intense, um, places where they have the community supports or community supports could be built for them to be successful uh, in there at, at home and with their families. We do also do some work around diversion. Some of our practices are in Lucas County, Ohio. They had a different completely approach and some work in Pierce County. I can, uh, uh, Washington, I can name a lot of those things, but what I wanna say in summary before I get a handoff to Lisa is the strength of my work is to connect and convene. If there's something somewhere you're curious about and you want to know about, if we're at in the least connected to these places, we can arrange opportunity for those conversations. If per chance um, Indiana uh, has a specific ask of the foundation, we have a portal for which you can make those requests of Casey, both for technical assistance to help you as you think about the work of these committee, committees um, and, and then resources uh, that don't involve sort of the strength and skill of people like Lisa. Sometimes people ask for grant funding and sometimes they don't prefer a grant. They want to say, no, I need the assistance of this person to move a particular thing. So I'm gonna, uh, I have lots of things I want to say and I wrote a lot of things on paper and I probably didn't say 
half of the things that I'm going to remember, I wish I had said, but um, um, I want to leave you with this. Um, I appreciate um, the thinking of the legislators and those conversations that likely happened with them before the this was proposed. Um, and I'm glad that you, you are chosen to accept the challenge and the opportunity to create something amazing for the children in Indiana. I hope to um, uh, learn as much as we could potentially support. Um, I know that you're not walking away from your detention reform work and that it will continue to spread because I don't know that we're ever done at the front door of the system and that the work will continue to grow. So with that, I, I'll hand to my colleague, Alisa Macaluso, and we'll maybe leave some space at the end for questions or not. If you have them, you can drop in the chat or, or send them to us. So, uh, Lisa? Thank you, Gail D. Yes. Thank you, Gail D. And good afternoon, everyone. Um, I am Lisa Macaluso. I am a technical assistance provider working currently in Indiana on behalf of the Annie E. Casey Foundation. Um, I've been working in Indiana since 2010, when Indiana decided to uh, take a stab at bringing JDAI to scale and has done an incredible job at that, 36 of 92 counties currently engaged in some form of that work. Um, thank you so much for inviting uh, Gail and I to be here. Uh, this is amazing, um, an, an amazing opportunity for the state of Indiana and having worked with so many of you over the course of these many years, I know that you will absolutely rise up to the challenge. Um, I wanted to just share really quickly, I've had an opportunity to both review the House bill and also the charging documents for each of your uh, subcommittees. Uh, and, and so I wanted to just talk maybe a little bit more specifically about um, the pathways that you all have chosen and about uh, the work around the country, the work that um, I am uh, supporting and helping both through the Casey Foundation and separately. Um, I think there's some areas of alignment in, in at least four areas uh, that you all are working on. And the first one is really about uh, diversion as Gail shared. Casey obviously has, um, has a, an approach to diversion, uh, which was just shared. Um, uh, your goal is to develop new policies, protocols and a statewide implementation plan for the provision and use of diversion and informal adjustment. Uh, and um, at the moment, I am currently helping a number of sites to craft local and statewide strategies to divert, uh, in some cases, between 60 and 80% of youth uh, who come to the attention of uh, the police or the youth justice system um, with a goal of uh, diverting all low level kids, char uh, kids with low level offenses or, have, or who have lower list risk levels. I've done that work in Florida, in New Jersey, and currently working in Los Angeles County on some of that work. Another area of alignment is data. Uh, Indiana has a very long list of goals uh, and plans for uh, data uh, improvement in Indiana. And I'll, I'll just say um, that all of the, the, pro the work, all of the reform work or the transformation work that Casey does or anyone actually does is rooted in data. Um, and for us and for me as a technical assistance provider, the approach is generally to help uh, states and counties to ensure that data are collected and used. Uh, used is important, collected and used to drive um, a continuous diagnosis of your system, to understand uh, what legislative or policy or practice uh, elements drive potential issues that you see in that data to support and help create and implement solution strategies to mitigate those issues and then um, to craft plans to measure results. A third area of possible alignment is in screening and assessments and really specifically there's a lot of things that we could talk about here, but uh, for the purposes of this meeting, uh, the most direct line is between uh, developing detention screening tools and connecting uh, pre-adjudicatory detention alternatives to those tools, work that Indiana has been engaged in for a long time, but maybe wants to be engaged in differently. Um, 
and what I'll just say about uh, that is I've, uh, I've worked all over the country doing that work. Most recently, um, I've worked in Florida to help them create a state screening tool and a continuum of supervised release programs, which are their detention alternatives in Florida. And I also led New Jersey's efforts, which became a, a national model in 2008. Um, and finally, uh, as Gail noted, a potential fourth area of alignment is really through the, the work of probation transformation um, and the frame, the, the thinking that uh, Casey has put out in a monograph around, um, around that work. But I think there's a lot of alignment there between uh, what you're charged with through the House bill and, uh, and sort of the thinking of the foundation. Um, so the, the basic idea is to uh, increase diversion, uh, which would ultimately make your probation footprint smaller. And then once your probation footprint is smaller, uh, to really be thinking about, or at the same time, really be thinking about limiting the standard conditions of probation. So not just uh, thinking through what those standard conditions are, but how do you limit those standard conditions, which I know is part of your, your, uh, your challenge um, in this work group. Also thinking about implementing family engaged case planning, something that uh, Casey has done a ton of work on, um, developing or improving incentive uh, and response grids for uh, non-compliance or for gaining compliance, most importantly, um, and moving kids towards a successful result and getting out of probation. Um, and, a, and a whole bunch of other things in this model, a commitment to racial and ethnic equity, making uh, a positive youth development a core function of probation, minimizing the use of confinement and placement. Um, and I think very importantly, not just holding the kids accountable for their behavior, but also holding the system accountable for the work that it does, um, both in, uh, in terms of um, helping kids to move through this time in their life and move on to a positive and successful adulthood. And so as a current team leader in Indiana, I am available to provide direct assistance should you determine the need. I should also uh, uh, just reiterate what Gail said, which is that um, there are ways to connect to the broader network of folks who are doing this work around the country um, through JDI Connect. Uh, and so, you know, whatever you determine you may need or want uh, to help you in this planning stage uh, to not only sort of fix the problems that you already see in your role, but to be visionary in your, uh, in your ability to recreate this system um, to improve the lives of kids and families in Indiana. Uh, I am certainly supporting you either with you or on the sidelines watching you as Gail said, and um, I appreciate your time and uh, your listening. Gail, is there anything else to add? You're on mute. Story of my life, I'm on mute. Um, um, I support um, what Lisa said, whether we're invited um, to uh, uh, be a partner in some way with you, or we learn from the sideline, we plan to learn. And I promise whatever you develop and create, we will borrow and share is there's so many young people that we could do differently and do better by. So thank you so much for having both of us here today. Thank you, Gail. Thank you, Lisa. Uh, thank you for that information. And, and uh, it, thank you for your encouragement, your inspiration, your confidence in, in all of us and the work that we are undertaking. Um, I think probably the best thing time permitting is, is that, that we digest this and, and allow um, our members to talk and, and we can collect any questions and or we can disseminate to our, our chairs if they don't already have your contact information and we can collectively reach out or they can individually reach out and, and that might be the best use of, of our collective time. So I think uh, I'm going to uh, thank you for, for right. your time and uh, uh, very, very helpful, and and uh, uh, talk to you soon. Thank you. Take Live care. Well. All right. 
So I hope that is helpful uh, to you, uh, as you as you process this going forward. Um, you know, we're, we're, we're a work in progress with a specific charge, and we are collectively a work in progress in, the, in, this, in this work. So I uh, wanted to share that, uh, that with you. We've got the minutes taken care of. We have our work group uh, updates. So our agenda item, uh, the family and youth engagement, and let me take a stab at, at the background uh, and then and then Leslie, Julie, and then uh, uh, Cirilla, uh, take it away, uh, so to speak. But as you recall, the requirement to get uh, input um, uh, from, from family and youth uh, engagement, those that have experienced the system as, as a young person and, and or as a family member. And the conversation was, do we want to set up a separate work group? What are the pros and cons about that? Advantages, disadvantages, strengths and weaknesses, or do we want to uh, augment each of the work groups with that component and, and do it that way? There's no right or wrong way. We discussed, well, then do we use the same people? How do we work that? How do we schedule that? Um, and the conversation, of the work group chairs uh, was a recommendation that that we create, consider creating uh, a separate standalone work group. And, and so the charge was, what would that look like? How can we do that? And so Julie and Leslie and myself, Julie and Leslie and others, uh, I've been hanging out, but that's about it. I uh, have worked hard on this to, to with Cirilla, obviously, and others. Uh, let's make sure, number one, we do this legally, right? Let's, let's make sure we're not, we're, not, uh, we're not doing the right thing and gonna suffer uh, for doing the right thing, but we're doing the right thing. It's the legal thing. And how, how might we do that? And proceeding along the lines of uh, establishing a, a, a separate work group that, that conceptually people could feed information to uh, and it could collect that information and, and give everybody that collective input that's, that's required. Um, so that's what we've undertaken and we have a, a proposed action item for discussion consideration um, Julie, anything you want to add, then Leslie, anything you want to add, and then Cirilla, I'll, I'll, I'll turn it over to you. Julie, is there anything you want to add? I, no, I would actually defer to Cirilla to present it, and then I can fill in if there's additional questions. Leslie, good go. Okay. As you have in your packets is the plan and proposed budget for voices to lead our family and youth engagement. As you can see, their history, philosophy, and impact, they have a long history in leveraging their expertise in the juvenile justice, social work, and education space for over 2,500 youth, of whom 84% are Black males, 100% live at or below the poverty level, and all are disengaged from traditional systems of support. And so voices definitely has the experience working in the communities where there is poverty, trauma, violence, the cycle, and has been successful in establishing programs with pretty awesome uh, outcomes and success. Uh, I think their ability was well demonstrated for those if you didn't have the opportunity when they partnered with the CIS, our commission, for the youth to put on a uh, forum for youth investment. It was phenomenal. I was very impressed. They did everything from the implementation, uh, the planning, the presentation. They were very well informed in each of our areas in terms of behavioral health, education, workforce, and um, 
we had 245 youth professionals, we had legislators, policymakers, and then afterwards, they were able to meet with each of the areas they represented and talked more about what needed to happen, which really, uh, I believe was a testament to their perspective and voice and giving us real feedback on what, how they experienced, I know for me, for behavioral health, uh, about what it feels like not to have resources at the school or not enough counselors and how that impacts them. So I thought that was very insightful and um, really made a difference of how we can incorporate their feedback into that. Uh, as you can see for the Youth Advisory Board for the their outline, the proposal is very well laid out. I was like, whoa, mm -hmm. put our little committees to shame when I looked at this, that really thought uh, very careful about the recruitment of youth, young adult and adults with lived experience in the youth justice system. They talked about the recruitment and uh, the numbers of youth to adults. Uh, with the focus on Marion, Madison, Lake, Vandenberg, Hancock, and Hamilton County, and to add more with the focus on rural. So all voices will be represented in that. Of course, the recruitment start date will still be announced pending on the decision from our uh, committee. Uh, and the participants will be selected through an application process um, facilitated in partnership with our committee. In addition to a peer review panel consisting of previous members of Power and Promise, their flagship youth leadership. So once confirmed, they have a very well thought out orientation with a high level overview of 30 1359 to include the history and people involved, introduction to elected officials, which I think is very important for foundation. So when issues come to the group, they're well informed. Um, expectations of the program participation to include times and stipend amounts. If you look there, they have uh, planned to have a 12 hour over six week training and participants will complete a six week training in preparation for the work over the next year. So as you can see, they've outlined topics in depth education about the House and Road Act, equity and inclusion, systemic practices and data, policies, proposal writing, ethics, public speaking, asset-based community development, and so I think this is a very well thought out plan and uh, aligns very well with the rest of our uh, committees. As Dr. Osma mentioned, having lived experience, I think this would be a very valuable resource for, for us to have. Um, the plan is to have participants uh, in monthly meetings to be held virtually in two blocks Two hour blocks, I think what's important for any success of any youth family component is to have meetings at times when it's convenient for the families. So often we have remake structures and we have plans for meetings that are during the day and not taken in consideration. People have kids, they're working and other commitments. We have to meet folks where they're at. So I, I really thought that that was very important. Um, so as you can see, there's an outline of how the meeting minutes will be structured. The meeting topics would include state of Indiana probation standards and the impact on the community, juvenile diversion and community alternatives grant program and community impact, juvenile justice data and community impact risk and needs assessments, detention tools, what is behavioral health? Um, and how is that defined? Uh, you know, we, we know we have our traditional mental health centers, but 
you know, we can open and expand that up. What does that mean for communities is that they're faith leaders. And so really thinking broader in, in terms of that. Uh, how are youth needs assessed in that? That's something we have talked about and looking at the assessment and is it really identifying what that youth and family needs? We will be able to get that feedback from that group. What are transitional services? Evaluation of current resources and community impact. Diversion programs, evaluation and community needs versus current resources. Subject matter experts series to discuss, to discuss local initiatives and outcomes. So I think that touches on all of our, our committee groups um, we have on our oversight committee. Data collection. Dr. Osma, evaluation will be completed six, six months, nine months, and 12 months to gather data on impact, program design, and skill attainment and goals. Written summary of the work, evaluation, and participant feedback will be presented to YJOC at the end of the term. So as you see, they also included a projected budget. Um, both the Department of Corrections and Division of Mental Health and Addiction have committed to support this budget. And so just like we all are paid <laughs> to do our jobs, we, this is a little extra, but I think it's important if we're going to elicit feedback from our youth and family to show their value and worth as well. So we're prepared to support and fund this budget and have Julie Whitman to work with voices in terms of the oversight. That's an extremely thorough proposal. Thank you. Yes. Two points of, of just clarification so that everybody is, uh, the co there's a cost component and, and your proposal includes uh, the commitment by the entities that will fund that. So uh, you, you and, and DOC uh, together are going to take care of that if, if we choose to proceed. Absolutely. And, and if, if, if we approve this, um, the data collection, the final report, that can, that's, that can be tweaked to account for what our deadlines are so that we have the re okay okay so i just and i will be looking at julie yes we, we can work yeah. backwards on yeah that mm -hmm. we have to adjust that okay i just wanted to immediately went to trying to do the math and um but okay great um thank you uh anything else to supplement that leslie julie before we open this yeah up? just a little a little bit of additional detail so as cyril mentioned i would i would interface with voices and kind of um basically staff this this work group on behalf of the committee while voices is staffing it in terms of training and facilitating with the youth and the families um, as you you saw all the topics related to your topics the um what I believe would be the the way to go, and and I know that Voices is is flexible on this in terms of like what do those two hour meetings actually look like. But at some point, the hope is that each of your work groups would sort of send an emissary to this group um, to share what you're working on and and get their feedback directly. Um, so that's part of that. So those topics are in no particular order. It's kind of as as your work group is ready um, to come to them. And it may be more than once. Ideally, it would be more than once during the process that you might come at the beginning when we're just teaching them about like, what is this? What kind of data is collected? Why is it important, right? And then later when you have something more concrete for them to react to. So I think ideally at least at two points, um, but again, we can kind of flow with how, how the work goes. Um, and we would also then have those youth, and I'm not sure if that came through here clearly, um, as they kind of react and give you feedback to, to verbally carry back to your group, they would also kind of commit their recommendations to writing as well. And so you could have that to, to share back with your work group. So that, that's the envisioned mechanism for kind of getting that feedback um, back and forth from this group to your group. So it's, it's really an advisory group. It's a little bit different from your work groups. I'm, I'm calling it an advisory group, um, but that, that's how we envision it functioning. 
Thank you, Julie. Leslie, mm -hmm. anything you want to add? Yeah, this is uh, the, the, the notion is to, to build this vessel that everyone can, can utilize um, and, and uh, to reduce um, an additional duty that, that we all have accepted in this charge uh, and trying to do everything we can to maintain continuity, consistency. Um, so that's, that's the proposal. Yes. So as we talked about at the last meeting, I think that the inclusion of family and youth is so critical to our work because so often we do our work in silos and we don't think about how it may affect the kids in front of us or, or the families in front of us. So if you're ready for it, I would move to approve this um, work plan because again, I think the involvement of youth and families is so critical to what we're doing and what our charge is. I'll take that as a motion. Is there a second? Uh, second that motion, uh, Justice. And to speak on behalf of Voices, our organization Circle of India has been working with their organization for some time when I worked for the mayor. Um, the organization uh, is working with the mayor's office for some time as well and knowing um, the strong penetrative factor they have with the family in the youth, it goes a lot deeper. And so uh, I definitely second this motion. Thank you. Any, any discussion? Still much work to do and, 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 and be thinking about how best to, to utilize this going forward. And, and you may want to liaison, you may want to, um, we will we will have our professional staff, so you know I'll 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 be participating in these uh, as an observer as liaison, um, like like all of all of the work we're doing we're going we're building it as we're operating already right um, so uh, much much still to do. Any other discussion? Yes, ma'am. Um, have one yes. question, maybe, I don't, Sir, I'm not sure if you can answer this. Looking under the data collection component, uh, the first bullet point on the second page, third page about evaluations, and it's giving a timeline of six, nine to 12 months, um, specifically on impact program design and skill attainment and goals of the Youth Justice Oversight Committee. Is that, to your knowledge, relative to the, the advisory group that Julie's referring to or us as a body? And that's part one of the question. And part two is that timeline um, doesn't, if it's relative to the work of this group, if it's meant to inform the work of this group in any way, it doesn't quite match up. So the only suggestion I would have is that if voices were to or could do a pretty detailed timeline, task time and task plan, especially so that the work groups can be aware of, so like Dr. Osman and I can build that into our meeting schedule and make plans to provide input and those sorts of things. I think in just in general, and I'll defer to Julie, that because this was a proposal, I believe that things will get tweaked mm -hmm. on approval and when we can get started. Mm -hmm. okay. Yeah, I agree. And on the to answer the evaluation part, um, they they build evaluation into all of their programs that they do with youth. So my my read of this is that they're actually evaluating the impact on the youth of participating in this primarily. Um, but I, I agree with you on the timeline. It's really it's envisioned as twelve months, but it's really going to end up being nine months by the time they get started. So yeah, the timeline will be tweaked. But I think their evaluation, just from having seen them evaluate other things that we've worked with them on, it's it's yeah. around sort of what's the, the impact on the youth, um, and then did they achieve the goals of the program, right? Which are to, which are relative to this group. And then um, Justice David, may I ask an administrative question? Absolutely. Um, agency to agency. So if DMHA and DOC are funding this, Julie, would OJA be the contracting agency? Yes. Okay. And we will have an MOU, Memorandum mm -hmm. of Understanding. Mm -hmm. Okay, thank you. Mm -hmm. We thought that would be the most expedient way to do this. <laughs> okay. Um, We'll just want to connect and make sure yep. that we're all in, on the same page. Okay, thank you. And that, yeah, that's consistent with the advice yeah. that we were given by our, our folks. Mm -hmm. um, so uh, what I'm hearing is, and, and I'll, I'll be part of this also, to make sure that Voices knows what our timelines are mm -hmm. such that their work feeds 
mm -hmm. influences our work. Um, and, and, and there's no misunderstanding there. And probably um, sooner rather than later, once we finalize that share, as Mary Kay suggested, with the work group chairs. Mm -hmm. So that makes sense to you all. And it, it needs to be adjusted or something's missing before we get two or three months into this. And then we can we can fix that. But I, I, I think that's what I'm, I'm, I'm hearing, that, that we need to make sure um, this is this is great, but, but it helps, right? That we were able to use it's not an afterthought or gosh, I wish you would have had this done. Um, thank you. Any other discussion about this? Just hi, Joel. Just, hi. <laughs> uh, this is uh, a genuine question, and I really appreciate the generosity of the agencies that are willing to fund this. Is a hundred dollars enough of you know, per month stipend incentive? And is there gonna be travel expectations for uh, persons who are participating, maybe from faraway counties? Because if we're gonna to try to get the rural counties involved, mm -hmm. is that gonna be another expense that we should expect? And is that something that can be revisited later as far as whether or not $50,000 is adequate to fund the participation in this? Mm -hmm. Yeah, so great question. Um, on the stipend amount, I got to defer to voices, right, because they have experience working with kids and paying them for the work. In terms of the travel, and the reason why I said this is an advisory committee and not a work group, is that um, it's, it, it, it's not a formal sort of subdivision of this group, so they, they will be able to meet online. And I think that's, that's the intent, to be able to incorporate all those kids from around the state and not require travel. Okay. So that, that's the plan. The thought was, in addition, we're likely to get better participation mm -hmm. of being able to do it virtually. Mm -hmm. Great question. Mm -hmm. Any other discussion? We have a, a motion and a second. to entertain a vote? All those in favor of uh, approving the action item, um, proceeding with our family and youth engagement uh, committee uh, advisory group uh, through voices. All those in favor say aye. 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 Anyone opposed? Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, amazing. So all thank you for taking the, the lead on, on this. And thank you. Uh, our partners at DOC, and thank you all. Uh, I think this is uh, this is a huge piece that oftentimes is uh, thought about and wanted uh, and needed, but it's just hard to make happen. And and so, great, great. Well, guess what? It's eleven fifty-two. I have I had fifteen minutes for checkout and closing. So I only have eight. I was going to take zero. Uh, the next meeting is October 12th. Uh, we will uh, prepare the minutes uh, ASAP and get those to you. So it's, it's as helpful as possible. Uh, a lot of information uh, has been shared. Probably send you uh, soon uh, just sort of a highlighted bullet points, perhaps uh, maybe just a reflection of my action items. And so you can take those as you wish, something other than minutes. Uh, you can say, okay, fine, fine, fine. Uh, but to help you out. Um, wanting to make sure that we uh, end on time is important. Those of you that needed ordered a box lunch, uh, they're outside, I think. And if you didn't, and your life has changed dramatically today, and you need one, you can have mine, uh, mm -hmm. but only mine. Um, and then our next meeting is gonna be at the government center, but stay tuned, mm -hmm. uh, circumstances change. Check out. We're gonna start here with Joel. Just go around the room, anything unanswered, any, any issues you wanna share, good, bad, or otherwise. Well, I am extremely excited, um, percolating through my head with things like grants and data. Mm -hmm. 
is the overlap with the juvenile justice system and our youth who are being prosecuted in adult court. We've, uh, there's been some legislative work to blur those lines a little bit with alternative sentencing, reverse waiver, and more recently with the juvenile arrestees being pulled out of adult facilities whenever we can. Um, and I'm sure that some of the courts want to know how they can tap into additional resources to try to work with those youth in more rehabilitative ways, at least as far as they have been pre-trial and, uh, and, you know, to that extent. So hopefully we can keep that in the back of our minds as we're working through all of this. Not much, just excited for our first work group meeting and wish everybody well. I am most thrilled about the opportunity to bring youth into this conversation. Um, I do hope um, that we get beyond engagement and involvement and we truly partner with those who have been impacted by the system. I would just say I'm ready. We're ready to go. Excited. You were born ready. I was. <laughs> I was born ready. I wake up ready. I'm just ready. <laughs> I would say I'm very excited to be able to have youth and family engaged during this process. I'm good. <laughs> I'm a judge, I'm good. <laughs> I'm feeling a little overwhelmed with how what needs to happen, but um, so yeah, I, I'm I'm that way every day. <laughs> okay. I'm I'm literally overwhelmed and just managed to <laughs> we'll, we'll get we're together. Yes, sir. What's up, Tessis? So I'm, I'm, I'm excited, but I'm a little bit confused, right? Kind of, no offense to everybody. I think I'm kind of the youngest on the committee right now. Um, Don't rub it in. No, I'm, <laughs> trying to, I'm trying to rub it in a little bit and let me tell you why, because I'm ready to get to work. I'm trying to figure out all the, the chairs and everything established, and I'm hearing all the committees, and I haven't received no email. Only time I meet with anybody is to come here. Mm -hmm. And so I'm ready to get to work with a lot of knowledge and skill sets. I do have a little bit to be a little bit young. Good. And we'll make sure, you know, the teams and make sure you're getting everything you need. And, and if we need to improve that, we can do that. Yes, sir. Steven? I'm good. I'm excited. Ready to work. I was going to talk about the twins, but. <laughs> Mary Kay? I'm doing well. Thank you, sir. I'm excited. I do want to emphasize that regardless of work group membership, work groups are open. Mm -hmm. So people to attend, hear what's going on, to give feedback. So regardless of individuals that are attending there, or at least having a voting presence, they're open to all of us, including family members, prosecutors, public defenders, and others. So mm -hmm. uh, I am good. I'm excited about the youth and family involvement um, because that's difficult to get on a local level. And I think um, you know, having trying to get somebody on each work group would really be really hard. But I think with them as a as an advisor group empowers them to really have a voice. So I'm excited. Uh, not much, I guess, to address a couple of points that were brought up. Uh, we did actually, I think you discussed that a little bit in our work group with the, the waived juveniles mm -hmm. and providing services for them. I'm trying to remember it. It was maybe glossed over a little bit because we talked about a lot of stuff. Mm -hmm. uh, but I think we did mention that as well. Um, and, and I actually, uh, James, to, to your point, I actually got a note here uh, to follow up with you at some point in time. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. So, and then I, I, did have a, I did have a question about that um, to Dr. Alden's point. Would it be possible, uh, like I know Nancy's my, my admin, basically, so to speak, uh, for my group, not to truly uh, minimize the work that you're doing, but um, would it be helpful or beneficial or is it possible for like, we've got all of our meetings scheduled out through November to, to put that out there so individuals for that absolutely other work groups know when we're meeting absolutely that's it that's all i have thank, thank you. you i'm free <laughs> what about the guy next to you it's nice to be in a room with the subject matter expert we see they be a
Yeah, that's a good one. Put us together. It's great. Leslie, anything you want to add today? No. Julie? You feeling good? <laughs> Great. Uh, thank you so much. I mean, I, we're working together. We have individual responsibilities. We have collective responsibilities. Um, my wife, Catherine, has been saving, I didn't know this, for like 15 years for this bucket list trip in January. And we're going to go climb Mount Kilimanjaro. And here, here, here's what I'm leaving you with, because this is, this is kind of what our challenge is. We each have 33 pounds maximum in a duffel bag, <laughs> including the duffel bag that the porter, Sherpas, the assistants will carry. We will then carry a, an individual pack. Our pack really can't weigh, including the pack, all the water and everything over 33 pounds. You don't really want it over 25 pounds, particularly if you're not in top physical condition. So the question is, how do you pack what you need to pack? I wanna pack my stuff. Okay, but what's our stuff that we can combine our efforts, we can collaborate, work, work together, and actually we can get more carried, but we have to have that conversation, we have to work together. And I don't know if I wanna do some of that, or I'm not used to doing some of that, even with someone you care so much about, because we care about each other, we care about these kids. But this is our opportunity. This is our opportunity. And for us, Kilimanjaro is a big deal, a really big deal, it pales by comparison to the work that you all are doing, have done, and you're committing to do it. So um, we will not fail. Gail D is supportive and she knows what we can accomplish. So thank you for being here. See you in October and many times before that. <laughs> Yes, you guys, I've actually uh, getting 